The following video has been created without the use of AI. Please support your human content creators by liking and subscribing and commenting something down below. Thank you. After the complete domination of the angels by demon hands during the last extermination, things had changed. Demons were riding a high that was indescribable. But especially the predators of Cannibal Town were flying high. Using their newfound image as angel annihilators, they began expanding their influence, which of course made the ones affected throw up bile and anger. And the woman responsible for all this, Charlie, well, she was none the wiser. You yourself respected the Prince of Hell for showing a new path, but you hated her for having to join forces with such vile creatures as the cannibals. After all, they ate demons. Demons literally eating demons. Ruthless, animalistic and sophisticated enough to organize feeding frenzies. Among the affected demon gangs surrounding Cannibal Town were the Sinner-born counterparts to the Hellborn Hellhounds, the Felix Demons. Human-cat hybrids, with their closest relatives ironically being the Hellborn Hellhounds. Things were always quite tension-filled between the two races, but under the frenzied gaze of ravenous predators, a truce was created. For the first time in Hell's history did Felix gangs and Hellhound groups work together. And yet, despite that, morals were quite low. Hellhounds especially didn't agree with the hit-and-run tactics of the Felix. Of course, the obvious answer to their stubbornness was a simple, Yeah, and that's why we took so much territory from you in the first place, Mutt. But of course, that would instantly destroy the Alliance. Perched on an antenna atop a tall building, you observe the riots below. It was like a zombie apocalypse down there. Just with furries fighting zombies in 30s era clothing. You too were Felix, leader of a small gang, specialized in robberies, using your nimble cat-like bodies to quickly enter and leave buildings. And you were transporting important cargo. The reason this current riot was currently occurring. But it wasn't a heist gone wrong. You used the stupidity and brawn of the local hellhounds to your advantage. The deal was simple. I'm just a poor little kitty cat. I need a strong, powerful wolf to protect me. I just need to sneak out a couple of papers from Miss Rosie's place. But if it goes tits up, I need an escape. Pretty please. Of course, breaking and entering was easy. Even the cannibal guards and security were no issue. Just, oh, clumsy you. Just as you were about to escape scot-free, you just accidentally dropped a noisemaker. The papers were stored securely in a bag hanging around your shoulders. They were quite unassuming, just the drawing and sketches of clothing. If the hounds saw what you came for, they would have shaved your fur as they would not see the tactical need in securing what was essentially next year's Auntie Rosie summer, winter and... What was essentially Auntie Rose's autumn and winter collection for next year? The sound of a door being kicked down caught your attention, however. Your cat ears twitched as you looked down. Two cannibals armed with large silverware appeared. Salvia dripping past their hungry lips. There's another one. Told you I smelt pussy. Growled one of them. You just barely managed to jump down the pole as one of them threw a butcher knife. Silver cooking utensils. Silver. There was a chance it was angel metal. Better watch out. The first one rushed you with a fork in hand. 
He was big and muscle-bound. Dodging him was easy. Your senses sharp enough that you could foresee his every move. You somersaulted backwards, using the claws of your feet to kick the item out of his hand, catching it mid-air. Curiously, you licked over the fork. There was no crackling over your tongue, so it was just plain silver. Thank God. Carelessly, you threw the fork down the building. Now the second one came. A tall, lanky cannibal. He jumped over the fat one. His arms were quite long, and he used them like whips. Ironically, he fought more ravenous. Faster, foregoing any defense. But he had range on his side. And he was just a bit faster than you. As you dodged, you felt his skinny fingers take hold of your tail. You could feel the pull all across your skin and spine, as with the strength of a mentally challenged person, he began throwing you around like you were a toy, slamming you into the roof left and right, feeling the hard stone slap into your body over and over again. Ooh, <laughs> I want to do that too, shouted the big one. You were close to passing out. Your entire body was in pain. Blood coming out of your nose. But you were lying close to the butcher knife that had been thrown at you earlier. You inhaled. And just as you felt the massive hand tightly grab around your tail, you raised it. I'm scared of that. Do you even know how to use it? Without hesitation, you chopped your tail off. You winced, screamed in pain, as the big cannibal raised your severed limb. It's like a meat noodle. You idiot, she's running away! Without your tail, it was difficult to make jumps across the roofs. You used it to make mild adjustments mid-air. But your parkour skills were quite good. And so you jumped over the familiar skyline. You felt alive, escaping quite literally by a tail's length. It was late. Checking your watch. It was too late. You should have been here 30 minutes ago. Exhausted and in pain, you walk through the lobby of the Vita back tightly secured. Demons and designer clothes eyed you with disdain as you shoved your hurt body up to the reception. You were dressed in a tight black leather thieving outfit, blood still dripping just from above your ass crack from your severed tail. We don't gauge it to the hopeless, sneered the demoness behind the counter. Oh, don't kid yourself, Sugar Cube. I ain't here to model. At least not like this. You slammed the bag on the reception desk. Taking out tweezers because she was just this disgusted by you, the demoness curiously opened the zipper of your bag. Seeing the papers inside, she raised an eyebrow. I know a certain fashion slut who wants to see this. So, can I go up now? The demoness snarled at you, and then pressed a button on your phone. A moment later, you heard a familiar voice. What's it, Karen? I'm busy. There's a hopeless cat thing here with papers. A short, dead silence followed. Bitch, why didn't you immediately send her up to me? Velvet's voice came so loud from the speaker that the demoness, Karen, rolled a few inches back with her chair. If you don't send her up this instant, I will use your skin for my next leather collection. Karen quickly muted the device. With a frightful glare, she said in a shaking tone, Miss Velvet will see you now. Drunting, you slammed your body into the elevator propping yourself up against the wall. Your butt was hurting like hell. 
In the elevator's reflection of her, you could finally see her face. You had a slender body, tight hips, short black fur covering your entire body. The only color came from white furred fingertips. Ah, it was a nightmare growing this body. Especially starting in autumn, when your fur changed from a thin, breezy summer coat to a thick, fuzzy winter one. You licked over your hand and brushed over your head. Your head was shaped like that of a cat, with big eyes, knife-shaped puffy ears that were right now twitching with every wave of pain from your behind. You looked dirty too. Ugh, she would show you out for this. Whatever. Job's done. The elevator stopped, and all mapped into a beautiful hall made from marble. The V-Tower did some non-Euclidean shit, like all those overlord places. So it was bigger on the inside. Velvet was standing in front of a statue of herself, of course. Mannequins with different outfits lined the walls of the hall, and a red carpet went right through the middle, and split around the statue, leading towards a staircase. Up were her private rooms, down her photo studio and a catwalk. Velvet didn't say anything until you stood right in front of her, beaten and bruised as you were. Without commenting, she held out her hand, and you just gave her the back. Snapping her fingers, a white metal garden chair appeared behind her, and she sat down. You crossed your arms. You were close to passing out. The pain was intense. And yet... You managed to wait patiently as she opened your back, taking out the stack of papers. Going through them one by one, not fully analyzing them just yet. It was just rare that Velvet kept quiet for so long. You better enjoy the silence as long as it lasted. Without looking up from the papers, she suddenly barked. You're bleeding all over my carpet. Gnashing your teeth, you put your hand over the open wound, your toes curled with pain. She knew this wouldn't do much. She just wanted you to put some effort into trying to stop the bleeding. <sighs> Thank God you were a demon. Some magical hell bullshit kept you from bleeding out. I suppose I appreciate that you took the words, come back to me as quickly as possible, serious. She reached the last page. She closed her eyes for a moment, nodded, and returned the papers to the back. Then she sat there for a moment, her hands folded in her lap. She had a forced smile. Come, you're displaced pitiful. She said after a minute of silence. With a confused look, you followed her. As she pulled a phone from her pants. Vox, she barked. Have you made a decision about the cannibal riots yet? Holy shit. Were you supposed to hear this? Yeah, well, you can fuck off with that. We're supporting the dogs and the cats. She then held the phone really far away from her head as loud shouts came from it. I don't give a shit! That you already recorded a three-hour-long news segment about the infighting between the cats and the dogs. We're supporting them now. Got it? You shrugged behind her. Infighting was an understatement. Hellborn and Cinnaborn don't mix well, after all. Not to mention cats and dogs not mixing well. If it wasn't for this common goal and some really big-breasted Felix girl selling their souls directly to Cerberus himself, this alliance wouldn't even have started. Vox, they're eating the cats, they're eating the dogs, they're just the people who live there, it can't be that hard to get people on their side. I mean, hello, their enemies are literally cannibals. I mean, who the fuck even had the bright idea to hire these vermin to fight off the angels? God, who's stupid like that? Velvet used her powers to open up a large glass door. Gulping, you continued close behind her. Yeah, well, a little pussycat just saved next year's autumn and winter collection from being outshined by fucking what's-her-face, the old bitch in the terrible dress. 
Uh, it's, it's Rosie. You mumbled. Velvet stopped, pressed the mute button on her phone, and growled. I appreciate your effort, pussycat, but if you interrupt me one more time, I'm personally going to tear your soul asunder. Your ears dropped and you shook scared. Good kitty. She then unmuted Vox and continued her conversation. It was about two minutes later when you realized that the hallway to her private rooms seemed to be excessively long. And looking behind yourself, it also appeared as if you barely made any progress from the stairs. She was using her powers to loop the hallway to continue a conversation with Vox uninterrupted. You were impressed by her display of ability, and a little scared too. Finally, she hung up. Ugh, it's like working with overgrown babies! After saying that, you finally made progress to the second door. Black, made from wood. Very refined looking. Now, before I let you in, she stepped around you. If you cry about it, I stop and you can go home. Uh, cry about what? Velvet had shoved her hand on your wound. But it wasn't the pain you felt from the touch, but rather the pain of bone regrowing that made your entire body tense up. You never experienced healing powers before, and you definitely weren't eager to ever experience them again. It was as if the pain the wound would have taken to heal and regenerate put into agonizing ten seconds of her more or less pulling your new tail out of the gaping hole. Once finished, however, you fell forward on your knees and hands. Your heart was racing. This was the worst experience of your life. Hey, stop pretending. But hey... You had your tail back. You looked at it with disbelief as you swished and swooshed it through the air. Taken out of your thoughts, you heard the noise of a door opening. Impatiently, Velvet looked after you. Five? Huh? Four? Your eyes widened. Three? And quickly you galloped forward. Huh. Good kitty. Wow. Velvet's private room. You had never been here before. It was beautifully decorated with black marble, golden finishes, and a lot of dark pink carpets and coverings and decorations. Very modern, too. Slowly, as you took in the scenery, you stood up on two feet. It looked like the Barbie mansion, if Barbie was a very rich golf girl that took her golf lifestyle not too serious, but enough to have it reflect in her room. Uh, so, uh, what now? You asked, a little afraid. Well, for one, you're gonna meow when I say you're gonna meow, but if you have to now, you're gonna take a bath right now. B bath? That came a little out of nowhere. That dirt all over your pretty fur. The split hairs and all. That. She gestured her hands up and down. She was critiquing your thieving outfit. Of course, it was meant to be practical, not pretty. Yeah, you ain't wearing that. No more. Unless you have to. She pointed at the door. Bathroom. Clean yourself. She ordered. Honestly, you weren't sure what was happening, but you couldn't refuse her. And so, you huddled into the bathroom. Oh God, was your first reaction to it. It was simply adorable. Unlike the rest of the place, it was made out of white marble, with intricate and fine patterns bright pink carpet before sink with a medium-sized mirror. And lining the edges of a square bathtub was a pink collection of shampoos and conditioners, all of names you had never heard of. 
but as he took in the sights, you heard a voice boom from the door. I ain't here in no shower! Oh god, she was serious. Holy crap. After shedding your dirty clothes, you stepped into the shower. Turning it on, lukewarm. Your humanity shined through by your lack of aversion for water. We had seen viral videos of cats swimming. Your own pet cats, when you were alive, hated being wet. You used Velvet's designer shampoos and conditioners on your entire body. <sighs> and it felt like heaven. Or at least that's how you would describe it. After all, you were in hell. All the dirt and dust was being washed out of your fur. And the lube-like conditioners made it feel incredibly soft. And due to the wetness, super sleek. You exhaled. You suddenly felt exhausted and ready for bed. But the night wasn't over yet. Stepping out of the shower, drying herself, was quick too, as Velvet had a hairdryer available. You just deal with your puffy fur for now. Wrapping a towel around your hip and chest, you eventually left the bathroom. In the meantime, Velvet had moved herself onto a stool next to a home bar. She had changed outfits as well, which also made you immediately realize why she invited you up here. She was wearing a semi-translucent pink bathrobe with a darker pink puffy collar and equally puffy cuffs that showed off the black lingerie she was wearing beneath. She looked quite beautiful in those. It's about time, she growled impatiently. Her legs were crossed elegantly, and her hair was hanging down. You blushed, though it was hidden by your black fur. Sit. Biting your lower lip and looking down at the floor, you approached Velvet. Sitting down next to her, she mused. Good kitty. After a moment of silence, clearly intended to mock you, she spoke up again. Without asking, she placed one of her hands on your cheek, her thumb sliding over your fur. So, pussycat, what's your preference? It was a direct question as such, an answer was expected. I... um... guys? She scoffed. <laughs> Why not tonight? Your heart jumped. She had the pride and the confidence of the devil himself, huh? You exhaled through your mouth. Your eyes transfixed on her lips, which were perked up into an evil smile. I can't tell you how much I've been begging the old TV ad for pet to stroke whenever I'm bored. Ugh, but I would have to share. And I don't like sharing, if you catch my meaning. You softly placed your hand on hers. You managed to not anxiously gulp. I do, Miss Velvet. She snickered, her face coming closer to yours. Your sensitive nose picking up the scent of a woman in heat, mixed with perfumes you'd never be able to afford. Silently you inhaled to prepare yourself, and then... She whispered before pressing her lips on yours. You of course knew that most overlords were secretly sex pests, but that she would freely have a cat hairs in her mouth was something you didn't expect. Her right hand brushed over the top of your head, causing an instant reaction by your cat-like body. Like a rush of sensitivity that you could feel throughout your entire spine. You didn't realize when you started purring that the low guttural growling from your throat was quite audible. Velvet mused as she continued to kiss you. This was clearly what she wanted from the start. And you had to oblige. 
placing both hands on your cheeks. She used her thumbs to open up your maw ever so slightly to allow entrance for her delicate, soft tongue. But as you felt her wonderfully soft appendage brush over your sharp teeth and then touch your tongue, she had difficulty not groaning. Yours was rough, thin, and quite flexible. Mm. It was a wonderful feeling, and exactly what she expected. Though being so overwhelmed by these sensations was something the Overlord didn't expect. She liked you. She liked the feeling you were giving her. And Valentino and Fox would not get their grubby claws on you. You were her pet. Her left hand traced around your throat. It tickled and left behind a hot sensation. That's when you felt a sudden tightness and velvet pulled back, a long string of zavia connecting your tongues until she closed her lips. In her hands was a red glowing chain wrapped around her wrist. Surprised, you placed a hand on your neck, feeling warm metal. Wait, when did she... Come on, all fours, snort her. With quivering lips, you obeyed. It wasn't even an option. The will to fight was entirely washed away. What did she do to you? Why were you so excited? With an evil smile, she, she pulled, and you went on all fours. Good kitty. Now, I want you to put that tongue to good use. Got it? She snickered as she pulled you into her bedroom. Hey, thank you for making it to the very end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it, and please remember to like and subscribe. But before I say goodbye, I would like to shout out all of my lovely channel members, especially my darling Stuarts, Husky HD17, Bella Mare, Mystic Jade 111, Giovanni Moretti, Twilight Mia, Angry Boxman, Hella, Melofia, Anonymous Weep, and Nicodemus D. I couldn't do this without your help. Thank you for your continued support. Anyways, I hope you have a nice day. Goodbye.